when you rely on life supporting devices to make it through each day, careful diligence needs to be taken to prevent tragic events. As I reflect back on the many blessings in my life, I am forever thankful for a fast thinking nurse who saved my life. Without this man's help, I would have died four and a half years ago. In May of 2017, I was very sick. My respiratory muscles were not strong enough to sustain my breathing needs. High carbon dioxide levels were threatening to end my life. I underwent an urgent tracheostomy procedure in which a tracheostomy tube was placed into my airway and I was started on invasive ventilation. When I had the procedure done, I knew very little about ventilators or tracheostomy tubes. I had complete faith that my doctors and the medical staff at the hospital had extensive knowledge about these items. While I was recovering from the tracheostomy procedure, my respiratory care was less than ideal. A respiratory therapist would come to my bedside and suction my lungs once or twice a day. My breathing was noisy. It was evident there was a lot of mucus in my tracheostomy tube. However, when the respiratory therapist came, my tracheostomy tube would be suctioned only one time. The respiratory therapist would then leave. A few days after surgery, I was struggling to breathe. No one came to my room to do airway management all day. The intensive care unit was very short-staffed, which meant my tracheostomy and ventilator were neglected. For a normal person, the nose and mouth moisten the inspired air before it enters the lungs. For a person with a tracheostomy tube, the upper airways are bypassed. Room air is dry, which means the dry air enters the lungs and causes the airways to dehydrate. It is absolutely essential to keep the airways moist to prevent mucus plugging the tracheostomy tube. If a tracheostomy tube becomes completely clogged with mucus, a person will not be able to breathe and will die. For this reason, there is a heated humidifier attached to ventilators. This machine warms and moistens the inhaled air. In order for the machine to work, there must be water in the humidification chamber. Without water in the humidifier, the inhaled air remains dry. My humidifier ran out of water early in the day. The respiratory therapist never visited me, so the air I was breathing was very dry. As the hours passed, the mucus in my airways became extremely thick. Finally, at 11.30 p.m., my lungs were suctioned, but by this time, suctioning was ineffective. The mucus in my tracheostomy tube was too thick to be collected through the suction catheter. The respiratory therapist left, leaving my water chamber empty. In a vain effort to get my lungs rehydrated, I found the sterile water and filled my humidification chamber. I hoped and prayed the mucus in my lungs would loosen up overnight. In the morning, it felt as though I had a bad chest cold. I could not breathe. When I got out of bed to go to the bathroom, I nearly passed out. I was huffing and puffing, but it felt as though hardly any air was getting into my lungs. When I laid down, I was overcome with coughing attacks. The mucus in my tracheostomy tube was audible as a bad wheezing sound. I asked the nurse to suction my lungs. He did it once, but very little mucus came out. He then called the respiratory therapist. While waiting for the respiratory therapist to arrive, my breathing was growing ragged. My heart was racing. I was drenched in sweat. The world was spinning. I was fighting hard to breathe. When the respiratory therapist suctioned my lungs, she squirted a little bit of saline into my lungs to help loosen the mucus. She suctioned my lungs once. Despite being in respiratory distress, she refused to suction any more. My nurse told me to just relax. They both left my room.
I fought hard to breathe for the next five minutes. It felt as though I was using every muscle in my body to get a tiny amount of air into my lungs. I summoned my nurse. I was very dizzy and felt as though I was going to pass out. The alarm on my ventilator was blaring. The nurse suctioned two times. He was able to withdraw a little bit of mucus out of my tracheostomy tube. The suctioning caused me to choke and violently cough. Now, my tracheostomy tube was completely clogged with mucus. I wanted to shout at the top of my lungs for someone to help me. But after getting a tracheostomy tube, I lost the ability to speak. I silently pleaded for help. I was going to die. I could not breathe, but my nurse seemed oblivious to my respiratory distress. When the world was growing dim and the chaos was about to completely overwhelm me, the commotion in my room alerted the charge nurse, Marco. He casually strolled into my room and asked my nurse if he needed any assistance. My nurse said no. The charge nurse assessed the situation. The charge nurse folded up some paper toweling and came to my bedside. He disconnected the ventilator hose from the tracheostomy tube. He then told me to breathe in as much as I could and then cough as hard as I could. As I followed the charge nurse's instructions, globs and globs of thick mucus sprayed out of my tracheostomy tube. Marco caught the mucus in the paper toweling. I kept coughing and coughing and coughing. Thick mucus kept erupting from the hole in my throat. Finally, after several minutes of violent coughing spells, I could suddenly breathe again. The horrible congested noise ceased coming from my tracheostomy tube. My ventilator air hose was reconnected to my tracheostomy tube. The charge nurse Marco and my nurse left my room. I slumped over in my bed, frantically gulping down air. With tears in my eyes, I started thanking God for hearing my cry for help. At just the right moment, Marco was alerted to my distress. Equipped with the knowledge to free me from my torment, Marco saved my life. If Marco would not have intervened when he did, I am pretty sure I would have become unconscious. Would the two nurses have been able to clear my airway if I would not have been able to assist by coughing? I am glad we will never have to find out. Thank you so much for joining me. Please remember to like and subscribe down below. I hope you have a great day and a wonderful week. And to everyone who celebrates, happy Hanukkah. Bye-bye.